John Wallace was an English mathematician who was the most influential before Isaac Newton. He was born on November 23, 1616 in Ashford, Kent, England. He died on October 28, 1703 in Oxford, England. His father's name was Reverend John Wallace. He was a church minister. He died when John was only six years old. His mother was Joanna Chapman. He had two younger sisters and two younger brothers. He first studied in a local school. In 1625, there was an epidemic outbreak of a contagious disease. Oh, no! So he had to transfer to James Moffat's school in Tenterden. In 1631 to 1632, he transferred to Martin Hall Beach School. That's where he learned Hebrew, Greek, Latin, and logic. In 1632, he attended Emmanuel College, Cambridge. He studied ethics, metaphysics, geography, astronomy, medicine, and anatomy. Now, mathematics was neglected during that time. That's why it's not on the list. People didn't really care about math that much. In 1637, he received a bachelor's degree in art and a master's degree after three years. In 1631, during the Christmas holidays, John came in contact with math for the first time. His brother taught him the rules of arithmetic. John said, It suited my humor so well that I did henceforth prosecute it not as a formal study, but as a pleasing diversion at spare hours. Now, although John really loved math, it wasn't until the age of 30 that he started pursuing it. In 1647, John read William Ottred's highly influential algebra textbook called Clavis Mathematica. It was considered to be the best in Europe. John started to study math ever since. In 1642, there was a letter brought to Wallace in cipher relating to the capture of Chichester. It took him only two hours to decipher. He started using his cryptography skills to decode royalist messages for the parliamentarians during the Civil War. In 1649, Wallace was appointed a professor of geometry at the University of Oxford. He held his position for 54 years until his death. He was part of Royal Society, where a group of men along with John would meet up weekly to acquire knowledge by experimenting and investigating. Their discussions were about anatomy, medicine, astronomy, geometry, and navigation. Wallace published one mathematical book called The Arithmetic of Infinitesimals. And those are his other two books. He was married to Susanna Glyde. And he had three children, Anne Wallace, Elizabeth Wallace, and John Wallace. Now let's talk about his contributions. He championed the use of algebra. He played a significant role in the development of infinitesimal calculus. He introduced a number line with positive and negative numbers. He introduced the infinity symbol. And he came up with the theorem of power rule for rational exponents. The power rule for rational exponents theorem. The power rule can be proved using implicit differentiation for the case where n is a rational number, n equals p over q, 
and y equals f of x equals x to the power of n is assumed beforehand to be a differentiable function. If y equals x to the power of p over q, then y to the power of q equals x to the power of p. Then we can use implicit differentiation to show that y prime equals p over q x to the power of p over q minus 1. Now let's prove the theorem. We're given that n equals p over q and y equals f of x equals x to the power of n is differentiable. We also know that y equals x to the power of p over q. Now let's go ahead and raise each side to the power of q. That way we get y to the power of q equals x to the power of p. We know that y equals x to the power of p over q. And our goal is to get y prime equals p over q x to the power of p over q minus 1. Let's continue with our equation. I'm going to take the derivative on each side. That's going to give us qy to the power of q minus 1 dy dx equals px to the power of p minus 1. Now we want dy dx to be by itself. So let's go ahead and divide each side by qy to the power of q minus 1. Now remember, we have dy dx on the left side because we're taking the derivative of y with respect to x. On the right side, we just use the power rule. That gives us dy dx equals px to the power of p minus 1 over qy to the power of q minus 1. Okay, let's continue. I'm going to rewrite the equation again. Now notice that y equals x to the power of p over q. So let's go ahead and plug that in for the y values that we have. Um, so let's work on the right side now. Um, let's multiply out the exponents in the denominator. That's going to give us px to the power of p minus 1 over q times x to the power of p minus p over q. Now we take the p over q out and subtract the exponents of our x's. Then we distribute the negative sign which gives us minus p plus p over q and the p's cancel out and that gives us dy dx equals p over q x to the power of p over q minus 1 which is the same thing as y prime equals p over q x to the power of p over q minus 1 and that is exactly what we were aiming for from the beginning so that is our proof yes! now let's do a quick recap we're given that y equals x to the power of p over q and our goal is to get y prime equals p over q x to the power of p over q minus 1. So we start off with our equation, which is y to the power of q equals x to the power of p. We take the derivative on each side. We want dy dx to be by itself, so we divide each side by qy to the power of q minus 1. So now we have dy dx equals px to the power of p minus 1 over qy to the power of q minus 1. Then we plug in x to the power of p over q for our y values. We multiply the exponents in the denominator. We take out p over q and subtract the exponents for x values. The p's cancel out and we end up with dy dx equals p over q x to the power of p over q minus 1, which is the same thing as y prime equals p over q x to the power of p over q minus 1. And now it's time for your review question. Find the derivative of y equals cotangent 3x squared plus 5.